Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, this is Detroit coming back to you uh, from the bunker here in Rochelle Park, New Jersey with another episode of the YouTube, YouTube Wars. This is Axis and Allies, the Garrison. So it is finally the USA's turn uh, to go again, all right? So we're halfway through round seven. As you guys well know, uh, the current score is uh, 10 uh, victory points have been achieved by the Axis. They need an additional two to uh, win the game by the end of round eight. It is round seven, so let's not forget. So, definitely things in the Atlantic are starting to heat up to the point of uh, boiling water. Yes, that's how interesting things are gonna get in this round, okay? The U.S. is definitely gonna go on the offense. The U.S. Uh, Air Force and the U.S. Navy have to deal with the blockers that the German Navy and uh, Italian Navy have set up in the Atlantic in order for us, the Allies, to do anything. In order to uh, attack any of our objectives in the Atlantic, we first have to knock out the blockers that the Axis powers have, uh, have arrayed against the American Navy in the Atlantic. So it's definitely a, a uh, cat and mouse game in the European theater of war. Pacific, well, Pacific, I think things have been pretty much resolved. Uh, I mean, there's very little that the Allies can do as far as taking Shanghai. And I believe there's also very little that the Japanese can do in terms of them being able to take Hong Kong back. So things are pretty much have been resolved in my opinion uh, in the Pacific. That's just my opinion, I could be wrong, okay? So anyway guys, uh, uh, enjoy the episode and uh, we shall find out how the dice roll. Stay tuned. All right, so it is the beginning of the USA's turn. Let's go over the current ground and naval situation for the United States. As you uh, well know, the U.S. Navy a couple of rounds ago was destroyed in Sea Zone 6 with the American fleet. So as far as uh, naval vessels in the Pacific uh, fleet are concerned, the U.S. really has almost to none with the exception of one naval transport in Sea Zone number 3. All right, so however, that is not uh, the... Uh, strength for the U.S. The U.S. Uh, the USA strength is in its air force in the the island uh, nation of the Philippines, where you have three bombers and four fighters. All right. The U.S. also has a couple of divisions in Kiangxi uh, in south in southeast China. Okay. Uh, basically, also up in the north, uh, you have uh, four divisions: three or three mechanized and one infantry division three and a more, and one regular infantry division in Manchuria. Let's not forget that Korea is under American control. All right, so the situation in the Pacific, I would say, has pretty much been resolved. Uh, the Allies and Axis uh, will find it very difficult to acquire any additional uh, victory uh, points. It'll be very difficult for the Japanese to take over uh, or reinvade or retake Hong Kong, just as it is, will be very difficult for the uh, Allies to take the victory city of Shanghai. So pretty much a status quo has been achieved. And uh, as far as I'm concerned for the Allies, that is enough. I am very happy with uh, the way events turned out in the Pacific for the Allies. Now, in the Atlantic theater of war, it's a little bit different. Uh, the war is still pretty much... Uh, going hot and heavy as far as uh, victory points are concerned. Both the Axis and Allies, uh, Allied powers have much to gain and much to lose. Uh, during the last turn, the Germans uh, set up a series of uh, naval blockers where they're denying access to the U.S. fleet. Not only the U.S. fleet, but the British fleet as well uh, are denying the Allies uh, amphibious access to any amphibious attacks along the coast of uh, Northern Africa and all along through the European, Western European theater. So it is imperative now that the U.S. go ahead and perform a series of attacks where these naval blockers are uh, running all the way from the North Atlantic through the Mid-Atlantic all the way to the uh, Mediterranean region of the Atlantic theater uh, that uh, these naval blockers be eliminated. Okay, the question is, can the U.S. Navy and Air Forces take out these blockers? Okay, uh, very, very uh, uh, critical role the U.S. Navy and Air Forces will play in this 
turn uh, uh, of round seven. All right, so basically that's just the the basic uh, breakdown for uh, the current naval situation for the U.S. All right, okay, so um, what did I buy with uh, my, what is it, with uh, the U.S. Treasury? Well, the U.S. Uh, ended up buying uh, uh, one tactical bomber as well as one uh, a regular fighter along with one aircraft carrier, three naval transports, three newly recruited infantry divisions, one armored division, and one regular artillery division. Okay, for a total count of 77 IPCs, that was the purchase that I made for the United States. All right, so let's not forget that uh, there's a lot going on in the Mediterranean. Uh, things are definitely, definitely getting hot and heavy. All right, guys, uh, sit tight and we shall come back. We shall return with the order of battle. All right, guys, welcome back to the combat uh, movement phase or the order of battle. We're going to go ahead with uh, our, our actual movements. I have my son here, Brandon, assisting me as my cameraman for this uh, uh, sequence. Okay, so the United States declared a total of eight battles, four battles in the Atlantic and four battles here in the region of mainland China. The first battle is going to be in Jeho. In Jeho, I am moving the three mech infantry that were in the Amur, moved at a movement of two and moved into Jeho. This single infantry division from Manchuria moved in unopposed as well, uh, liberating this territory for the Chinese. Okay, so Jeho now is Chinese again. All right, so second battle is the battle for Hunan. It's also a walk-in where you have the single American if, uh, armored division coming in from Yunnan into Hunan. Okay, so that's liberated. That province is liberated for the Chinese as well. The third battle is the battle for Kiangxi, which is also the liberation of the province of Kiangxi, which is a walk-in. You have one single U.S. infantry division coming in from Kiangxi. Okay, the fourth battle is taking place in Hong Kong, where you have one artillery division, U.S. artillery division, coming in from Kiangxi and liberating Kiangtong. Uh, in essence, liberating the city of. Hong Kong, which is, of course, a victory objective for the Americans. Now, this, in essence, now denies the Axis powers one victory point, bringing down the Axis down to uh, nine victory points overall. Keep in mind, once again, that the Axis need 12 victory points by the end of round eight. Currently, they only have nine, so they're short by three. All right, so let's go over to the Atlantic where the U.S. Air Force and U.S. Navy will be attacking the German blockers that were set up in the uh, Atlantic. In Sea Zone 90, you have one cruiser coming from Sea Zone 106 at a movement of two. You have the U.S. tactical bomber coming from California at a movement of four. It's going to go one, two, three, four. Okay, we'll destroy the cruiser, hopefully, and then five and six land in either British, British New Guinea or French Guyana. Okay, so that's uh, the fifth battle. Battle number six is the attack on the battleship Bismarck in 103, season 103, where you have one U.S. destroyer coming from season 106 at a movement of two. One, two. You have a U.S. tactical bomber and fighter squadrons coming from California at a movement of four. That'll be one, two, three, and four. Okay, same thing with the bomber. This bomber moves in at four and will have five movement, movements left in its gas gauge. The tactical and the fighter squadrons will also have three gas movements left in their gas gauges. Okay, the next battle is for C-Zone 108, where you have the German destroyer being attacked by two U.S. destroyers and one submarine coming over from Sea Zone 106 at a movement of two. Okay, and last but not least, 
the battle in season 117, you have a single German destroyer being attacked by three U naval aircraft. It's going to be three tactical bombers attacking the single uh, uh, German destroyer in that season. All right, guys, uh, that's it for uh, the order of combat, and stay tuned for the results of combat. All right, guys, let's go ahead and resolve combat. Uh, we'll start first with the battle in Season 90, where we have one cruiser and one U.S. tactical bomber, a Dauntless, attacking the German cruiser in Season 90. So let's pick up the two dice. The, the first set of dice is my two Americans, two at two. There we go. And they both missed. Okay. My German cruiser will engage and roll. Missed. Okay, let's go again with my Americans. Tensions are high. Okay, so I got one hit. See that? All right, so the German cruiser does get to defend, though. And no hit. All right, so then that German in season 90... Is sunk. All right, so let's go to battle for season one hundred and three. The battle for the say, for the battleship Bismarck. Okay, so in this battle we have uh, one destroyer, one uh, fighter squadron, one tactical bomber squadron, and one strategic bomber squadron. So that's two at four. No correction. Uh, yeah, two at four, one at three, and one at two. And the battleship defends with one at four. Okay, so let's roll. There we go. Okay, we got one hit. All right, I'm going to assume that the, not assume, the, the German battleship, the Bismarck, will take one point of damage. Okay, so let's turn it on its side. It will defend, it will roll with a one at four. Okay, scored a hit. Score to hit. So we're going to take out the American Destroyer. Okay, so let me take out from the die. The Destroyer is the two. I will roll with one at three and two at four. Here's the battle for season one or three. And I got two hits. Okay, so the battleship is sunk. I'm going to go ahead now and roll with the Bismarck. And it scored a hit. So I actually drew blood. So the battleship is done. Let me see what I can take out here in season 103. I'm going to be taking out um, three. Okay, I'll be taking out the tactical bomb. Okay. That's out. All right, so then let's go for battle uh, in season 108 with the German destroyer. It's being attacked by two destroyers and one submarine. So that's three at two, attacking one at two. All right, so here we go. Got one hit. All right. Let's roll for the destroyer. Missed. Destroyer missed. This guy's out. And let's go for the last battle where we have three U.S. aircraft, three tactical bombers attacking the single destroyer. So that's going to be three at three. I got one hit. The destroyer will shoot back with one at two. And it scored a hit. All right. All right. So I'll be taking out then one of my tactical bombers and the destroyer's out. All right. So 
All right, so we have, in essence, taken out the all of the uh, German blockers in the Atlantic. Uh, if we go back to the Pacific, let's probably go over to the mainland China, please. Uh, these battles are pretty self-explanatory. There were walk-ins. So the battle in Jehol was a success. Unopposed, same thing in Hunan, Kiangxi, and Guangdong. All right, so which is... Uh, 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 the liberation of the city, the victory city of Hong Kong. So in essence, now the Axis powers are down to nine victory points. All right, guys, sit tight, and we'll be back with the uh, non-combat movements. All right, guys, let's go ahead with the non-combat movements. Okay, uh, first of all, I would have to say that what a series of battles were fought here in the Atlantic uh, needless to say, the German blockers and the naval blockers that were set up in the Atlantic were uh, all eliminated. However, not first without having the Germans inflict uh, injuries or casualties on the Americans. The U.S. did lose two tactical bombers, okay? No, uh, yes, tactical bombers as well as one naval destroyer. So let's go ahead then with the actual uh, non-combat movements and final placement of units as far as the units that were used for for the resolve combat stage. So these two tactical bombers have three uh, movements left in their gas gauges, and they'll be landing in Iceland. Okay, so they're going to be going there. One, two. Okay, let's fix this. So I have two tactical bombers in Iceland. All right, my strategic bomber in season 103 has five movements left, and that's going to be one, two, three, and four. So it'll be going there and landing in Iceland as well. All right. The other aircraft, the squadron, uh, the tactical bomber squadron in season 103 has three movements left in its gas cage, and it's going to go one, two, and three, and it'll be landing in British Guinea. Okay, the remaining tactical bomber in C zone 90 will also move at a, at a movement of three, one, and two. It still has one left, but needless, it's not you know, doesn't need it. So I have one fighter squadron and one tactical bomber squadron in British Guinea. Okay, and I think that's about it for my non-combat movements in the Atlantic. So let me remove these movement markers. All right, and now let's go to the Atlantic. Correction, the Pacific. So I'm going to move the single infantry mechanized infantry in Soviet Far East into the armor. That's going to be at a movement of two, one, and two. My naval transport in Sea Zone 3 will be moving in at a movement of two, one, and two into Sea Zone number five. Okay, now let's go over to the Philippines where I have three strategic bombers and they'll be moving at a count of nine. That's going to be, and they're going to be transporting six infantry total. So it's going to be one, correct, let me see. One, no, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, landing in Kenya. I'll do that again for you guys. That's going to be. Let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So I'm going to bring over those two bombers, three bombers actually, as well as six U.S. infantry that will be landing, will be placed in Kenya as well. So that's three bombers bringing over six infantry, and they're, they're now in Kenya. Okay, I still have four, infant, uh, four tactical fighter squadrons that will be engaging, and they'll be uh, landing in Calcutta. 
in India. So that's going to be a movement of one, movement of two, two, three, four, five, and six. So all four aircraft will be landing in India, in Calcutta. All right. Am I forgetting anything? Am I uh, not seeing something? Uh, I think I pretty much covered all my movements. Um, yeah. So I'm going to go ahead now and place my new units, which I shall. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to see carrier with two aircraft. Right. My three naval transports. Uh, my six infantry, my, my three infantry, and my mechanized, or, uh, my armored division and my artillery division. So that's a total of one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Actually, I may have more than. Okay, I'm going to place one infantry here in central USA because I cannot, I'm exceeding. Three, four, five, six. Yeah, I was exceeding the placement in Eastern USA, so I'm only placing the other, the, the remainder of one infantry division in Central USA. So that'll be able to produce one unit from that region, from that uh, territory. All right, guys, I was actually forgetting, and good thing I remembered, because if not, that would have been a, a, a bad move on my end by not moving my naval carrier. It's part of a strategy to move that carrier. So this carrier will be actually moving to C zone 104 at a movement of three. So it's going to be one, 107, 2, 108, and 10, uh, 104. So that's a movement of three. I'll be placing it right there right now. So this carrier now is in C zone 104. Okay. At a movement of three. All right. Good thing. Once again, I noticed if not my, uh, allies would have been a little bit upset with me, I think. In any case, uh, it is now in C zone. That carrier is now in C zone 104. For the Americans, I'm handing over the torch to the Chinese, and the Chinese will be purchasing uh, three, uh, three, uh, what is it, uh, light armored units, which are the equivalent of three. Uh, cavalry units, okay, at a cost of 12 IPCs. Okay, the Chinese will be making two combat movements. One unit goes into Hopi and relieves that uh, Chinese province, and will in turn, the rest of the units will then go into Kweichau, okay, which is, I believe, about let me see, that's three, six, a total of nine infantry divisions moving into Kuichau. Okay, so that's nine infantry uh, divisions moving into Kuichau, and I'll be made, placing my newly purchased units, and that's the three light armored divisions that were pur just purchased by the Chinese. All right, so we're not currently now more than halfway through round seven. Definitely uh, turn seven for the U.S. was uh, very interesting and very challenging around. Uh, the naval blo block, uh, blockading pieces that the German Navy had set up in the Atlantic had to be uh, undone, or the naval blockade, uh, which will now allow the U.S. to uh, have options as far as performing they are amphibious operations in Morocco uh, or London, okay, or for that matter, anywhere on the eastern seaboard. Definitely very interesting. I have to remind you folks that the uh, Axis now have a total of 9 out of 12 victory points, uh, which means that they're going to have to, from here, uh, from the, for the remainder of round uh, 7 and round 8, will have to, they will have to acquire an additional three victory points for them to win the game uh, with a total of 12 victory points overall by the end of round eight. So definitely it's food for thought. 
I think the pressure is on not only for the Allies, but especially for the Axis because they are the, uh, the side that has to uh, produce. They're the ones who have to uh, acquire an additional three victory points within the next one and a half remaining rounds that are left. All right, guys, uh, this is it for this round. It is now Corporal 24's turn. Uh, he will uh, take uh, uh, command of his uh, remaining United Kingdom forces, and we shall see what happens. Okay, uh, guys, I look forward to your commentaries. Let me know what you're thinking. And as always, don't forget to hunker down and play.